today uh, we will discuss about uh, two reactions the first one is the homologation of the aldehyde and the ketones by using diazo methane and the second one is the benzene dnt arrangement reaction so first of all is uh, homologation of the aldehyde and the ketones by using diazo methane this reaction is basically used to prepare the higher homologues of ketone and is used to convert aldehyde into ketones in this reaction generally the aldehyde and ketones react with diazomethane in different type of the solvent and after this reaction they generally get converted into aldehyde will get converted into ketone and the ketones will get converted into their higher analog means ch2 group will be inserted between the carbonyl group and the r group of the ketone and this ch2 group will be inserted in case of aldehyde between the carbonyl group and the hydrogen of the aldehyde for example this is your benzaldehyde this benzaldehyde when react with diazomethane this will get converted into acetophenone just like this one so this is the method to convert aldehyde into ketones now what is the mechanism for the reaction the mechanism for the reaction is first of all you know the first step uh, will inv uh, involve the attack of ch2 negative on the carbonyl carbon that is the addition reaction will happen and when this ch2 negative will attack on the carbonyl carbon there will be the addict addition product will be synthesized after that there will be a rearrangement and this rearrangement uh, will not involve the formation of the carbene as the intermediate uh, this will be you know a concerted type of the mechanism will happen in this case and uh, this uh, you know hydride migrate to this s2 with the elimination of this uh, molecular nitrogen from here and migration of o negative to form carbonyl group c double bond o so this will be synthesized now what is the problem with this reaction the problem with this reaction is the formation of the epoxide as a uh, side chain uh, reaction in this reaction you know uh, aldehyde is get converted into the ketone but uh, 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 along with this one we also get the epoxide as the uh, sometime that epoxide will uh, obtained as the major product instead of this ketone so this is the limitation of this reaction and how that can be obtained that will only be obtained when this O negative will attack on the CH2 and then uh, molecular nitrogen will be eliminated out it will get converted into the epoxide similarly the mechanism will happen in case of ketone for example this is your ketone the first step will always enable the attack of CH2 negative on the carbonyl carbon and when this attack will happen it will form an adduct and after formation of this adduct you know R group now if this particular R group it uh, this ketone is unsymmetrical at that time uh, you know migratory aptitude will play the important role and that will decide that uh, which will be the major product and what will be the minor product in the reaction for example here we are taking uh, a case of symmetrical ketone so in this case any of the r group can migrate uh, that will have equal tendency to migrate at that time you will get only a single product so generally the formation of the major and the minor product will be decided by the migratory aptitude in case of unsymmetrical ketone so this you know r group will uh, migrate along with its electron pair those uh, the ch2 with the elimination of this molecular nitrogen and with uh, you know o negative will come here to form c double bond o so higher homologue of the ketone will be synthesized in this case so this is the homologation of the aldehyde and ketones by using this diazomethane reaction from this uh, the synthetic utility of the reaction is that you know you can prepare from aldehyde uh, can be get converted into the ketone and the ketone can get converted into the higher homologues so uh, just this is for lengthening of the carbon chain in case of aldehyde and ketones and then these different kind of uh, compounds synthesized from this one they can get converted into different other type of the uh, you know uh, products and that will uh, depend upon the different type of the rearrangement so this is your application in this case now uh, we will come to our uh, you know cyclic ketones in case of cyclic ketones for this reaction uh, you know sometime the product formation of this epoxide will be 15% and the product formation of the 
uh, higher homolog of the ketone will be 65 percent so this will be happen in this case uh, you know migratory aptitude uh, this is an example for the migratory aptitude in which the aromatic ring will prefer to migrate over the simple alkyl group so this group will migrate and this will be the major product and this you know R group is having less tendency to migrate as comparison to AR group so it will migrate and this will also form the minor product so the product formation will always depend upon the type of the migrating group in this case so that's all about your uh, uh, this reaction that uh, addition of diazomethane to aldehyde in ketones now we'll come to the next rearrangement reaction and this is called as a benzidine rearrangement this is very ex a uh, good example of this kind of reaction in which we are having the N N diphenyl hydrazine and when this particular hydrazine uh, react with acid it will get converted into you know a different type of the products the variety of product will be synthesized in which the major product will always be uh, 4 4 prime diamino biphenyl it will be the major product and along with this major product you will also get some minor product as 2 4 prime diamino biphenyl and out of these major and minor product there are several byproducts that will also be synthesized and these byproducts will involve uh, formation of you know uh, orthobenzidine uh, orthosamidine and parasamidine will also be synthesized along with these however these are the byproducts still the major product will be 4 4 prime diamino biphenyl in this case of reaction means it is the rearrangement of n n prime diphenyl hydrazine in presence of acid into 4 4 prime diamino biphenyl this is called benzidine rearrangement now what will be the you know what will be the mechanism of this reaction uh, the mechanism of this reaction is particularly very important and uh, how it involves the mechanism uh, this is you know the mechanism of the reaction what mechanism it involves generally the mechanism is uh, 5 5 sigma tropic rearrangement reaction the mechanism involved in this reaction is always the concerted 5 5 sigma tropic rearrangement reaction in which what will happen in the first step first step you know uh, will be a uh, uh, first step in which diprotonation or either monoprotonation will happen and this is you know the product of the diprotonation in which we get the dianion in which both the n are having 2h positive and then they are forming ns2 positive and ns2 positive now this uh, type after this diprotonation there will be 5 5 sigma tropic rearrangement type of reaction in which number one goes to this nitrogen 1 2 3 4 and this is your 5 similarly in the other ring we have nitrogen n positive as 1 2 3 4 and 5 this 5 4 bond will migrate to the fifth position of this benzene ring and this uh, in case of second benzene ring the 5 4 bond will migrate in between 3 and 4 and this you know the bond between third carbon and the second carbon will migrate between the nitrogen and this carbon second carbon to form and double bond carbon similarly this nitrogen nitrogen bond uh, between these two nitrogens will shift itself to uh, one of the benzene ring between nitrogen and second carbon and this you know uh, bond between second and third carbon will shift itself to third and second carbon will form double bond and there is new bond formation between this phi position of the this uh, carbon you know this para position and uh, this para position so they will get connected with one another and after this complete rearrangement we will get this type of structure and finally uh, you know this is the slowest step and this is the rate determining step in which the rate will uh, rate will be decided by this particular step and finally these two h positive will be eliminated out and there will be aromatization of the ring and our desired product that is 4 4 prime diamino biphenyl will be synthesized in this case this is the mechanism for the reaction now the evidence is that prove that the mechanism will proceed with the sad mechanism or the sad course of reaction first of all uh, this di ion uh, which is prepared here uh, this 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 one is the di ion uh, di ion it was separated in the case of reaction and it was isolated as a stable species and that was characterized so first of all the characterization of this particular di ion is the strongest evidence that the mechanism will proceed the said uh, course of reaction that it will proceed with the said course of reaction now 
come to the second. Second one is the isotopic labeling effect. In case of isotopic labeling experiment or uh, the same experiment, uh, same uh, evidence that was uh, proved by isotopic labeling experiment was also proved by the, uh, you know, uh, this crossover experiment when we take uh, this substrate and we take this substrate, these two are mixed together and they are reacted uh, in presence of H positive, uh, they react differently. Uh, this particular isomer will form this product and this particular isomer will form this product and no crossover product will be synthesized in this case and secondly this carbon is either 13 carbon or 14 carbon means this carbon is isotopically labeled and this carbon is particularly a uh, uh, particularly present in this product only and this is not the part of this product so we can say that there is no cross product in this case and when the cross product is not here it means uh, uh, the reaction mechanism is particularly intramolecular and not intermolecular in its nature. So first, this can also be uh, uh, proved on the basis of the isotopic labeling experiment. And the third one, or you can see that uh, it is the last evidence for the reaction is, uh, you know, kinetic isotope effect. In case of kinetic isotope effect, we, uh, what we did, uh, we did that uh, this particular uh, deuterium, this particular uh, carbon and hydrogen bond was replaced with deuterium in one of the isotope and in second one we have carbon hydrogen bond and when it was uh, you know calculated that this is your carbon deuterium bond and this is your carbon hydrogen bond and then a reaction was uh, uh, made to happen and then we find out the kinetic isotope effect that kd upon kh was came out to be one it means there is no kinetic isotope effect in this case. So, it can be said that in this case, uh, this particular carbon hydrogen or the carbon deuterium bond is not broken in a rate determining step and the same can be seen in case of the mechanism uh, uh, in the lower, you know, uh, phases we have the mechanism and in this mechanism we can clearly see that uh, this was your step in which this hydrogen bond was uh, broken into the first step and this was not in the rate determining step though so this kinetic isotope effect uh, uh, tell us that this carbon hydrogen and carbon deuterium bond is never broken in rate determining step instead it is broken into the last step now similar isotopic labeling uh, effect was also studied when nitrogen was isotopically labeled and uh, carbon means the para carbon was also isotopically labeled now uh, uh, consider this uh, uh, this is very important and how this was carried out uh, for example this is you know uh, this is one of your substrate and this is another substrate in which what we did this is your 40 nitrogen and this is your 50 nitrogen and then we find out the result and the result were uh, this is your result and this is your result these are 50 nitrogen these are 40 nitrogen then we determine kn14 upon kn15 and the ratio was came out to be 1.022 when it came 1.022 remember i told you in the earlier step that there are two different kind of the product will be synthesized rather not only two there are different kind of products will be synthesized in this case and the major product will always be 4 4 prime dime amino biphenyl and the minor one will be 2 4 prime dime amino biphenyl so in case of 4 4 prime dime amino biphenyl it was came out to be 1.022 but in case of 2 4 dime amino biaryl it come out to be 1.063 it means that uh, these two reactions will uh, involve a breaking of the nitrogen nitrogen bond in rate determining step so from this kinetic isotope effect we can observe that nitrogen nitrogen bond is being broken in the rate determining step and from this kinetic isotope effect we can say that carbon hydrogen and carbon deuterium bond is not broken in case of rate determining step now there are further evidences for the reaction and what are those evidences and this is very important evidence for the mechanism we can uh, conclude this mechanism and what was that you know when uh, the reaction was uh, run with hydra azobenzene labeled with 14 carbon means we have uh, n and diphenyl 
uh, hydrazine and in that hydrazine at para carbon at para position the carbon was labeled as 14 carbon right then there was an isotope effect of 1.028 for the formation of 4,4-diamino biaryl. Please remember this one. When this 14 carbon at para position was uh, isotopically labeled with 14 carbon, at that time the isotopic effect was come to be 1.028 for the formation of only 4,4-diamino uh, biaryl. But there is, uh, you know, no isotope effect for the formation of 2,4-diamino biaryl. It means that, uh, you know, this particular involved, 4,4-diamino derivative involved, nitrogen-nitrogen bond breaking and carbon-carbon bond formation takes place into the rate determining step. But in case of 2,4-diamino uh, biaryl derivative, the nitrogen nitrogen bond is being broken into the rate determining step but there is no formation of carbon carbon single bond into the same step it means the mechanism for these two different kind of the product is uh, resemble only in case of formation of nitrogen nitrogen bond it never resemble in case of formation of carbon carbon single bond so finally when it came out to be uh, the evidence for this reaction the mechanism was found to be equally uh, equally suitable or and it justify all these evidences so you know the 5 5 sigma tropic rearrangement is the acceptable mechanism for the formation of 4 4 prime diamino biaryl derivative in case of n n phenyl gene sometime there is also evidence which prove that uh, sigma tropic rearrangement is not there in case of benzidine rearrangement reaction and rather the reaction proceed with the formation of the radical cation so overall we cannot uh, uh, we cannot say it uh, uh, with evidence with proof but some studies proved it and similarly the formation of this 2,4 diamino uh, biaryl derivative there is no clear, uh, clear cut evidences regarding what mechanism will this particular product uh, follow uh, this particular uh, formation of this particular product will be followed when n n diphenyl hydrazine will get converted into this particular uh, you know uh, product so this is all about your benzidine reaction and uh, you know reaction of aldehyde and ketone with diazo methane tomorrow we will discuss two more rearrangements the chapman and the valachi rearrangements